Hi everyone, I'm Carla Johnson and I have spent a lot of time in parking lots, a lot of time in parking garages. In fact, some of it has been spent looking for a parking space and an embarrassingly amount of time has been spent trying to find my car once I actually parked there. I've also spent a lot of time circling the block, looking for that empty metered spot because I'm late for a meeting. I eventually find that spot, realize I don't have any cash, realize I don't even have a credit card to pay for my parking spot. And I know when, you, when we talk about innovation, usually one of the last places people would ever bring up about a place to find inspiration for great ideas and innovation is a parking lot. But that's exactly what we're going to talk about today on Connect the Dots, because today's guest is Jeff Perkins, the chief marketing officer who recently became Park Mobile's CEO just a little over a month ago. And Park Mobile is that app that lets you find and pay for parking right from your phone. If you don't have it, you need to download it because it really is a lifesaver. Now we're gonna to talk to Jeff about a whole lot of things, like what it's like to lead innovation inside a company and truly make innovation everybody's business. We're gonna talk about his transition from being a CMO into a CEO, and also about his almost ready to release, newly released book, How Not to Suck at Marketing. Connect the Dots is the show where we look at where people find inspiration for their great ideas and then how they put them into play. Jeff, thanks for joining us. I'm delighted to have you today on Connect the Dots. Thanks, Carla. Uh, very happy to be with you again. Now, it looks like you're joining us from the world headquarters of Park Mobile. Is that right? Atlanta, Georgia? We are. We are. We're, um, we don't have everyone back to the office yet, but there are a few of us here. Working on that transition. Now, it was um, a little over two years ago. I think it was March of 2019 when I first reached out to you because I had started to read some things that you were leading with innovation at Park Mobile. And in, I mean, the technology world, much less the world of COVID, everything has changed in two years. What do you see as the biggest change that you've seen come about in Park Mobile and the work that you do in the last couple of years? Yeah, uh, you know, COVID was was interesting for our business in a lot of ways because uh, on one end, if people aren't going out and people are kind of sheltering in place, uh, nobody's parking. And so that had a, a really negative impact on our business where you just saw, I think in um, from, from March 2020 uh, to April and May, our, our transaction volume and our revenue was down about 95%. Uh, and and that's uh, that's not great uh, for a business, and especially because we had been just growing uh, on this kind of meteoric rise for so long, and so suddenly it all it all came to a, a halting stop uh, with, with COVID. Uh, but while while we saw our our kind of a core you know revenue numbers down, we also saw this real move towards away from uh, traditional parking hardware to contactless payment options. And that obviously worked our advantage. So we signed on more new clients during COVID than we had in probably the, the past three years in the companies um, in the company. So we just kept onboarding these new clients, knowing that once people start going back out, once people start kind of you know uh, once uh, mobility kind of people go out drive their cars again, um, that would serve us well. And and so. Um, I'm happy to say now sitting here in, in 2021, um, we really are seeing a resurgence. Actually, last year, uh, or last last week on Friday, we had our all-time record day for transaction volume. So that was very exciting for everyone at the company. Um, so people are back out there. People are getting on the road again and people are parking again. And because, you know, during during COVID, we really, uh, really kind of doubled down on on uh, client acquisition and expanding our network of the places where Park Mobile is available. That's really serving us very well right now. And so we've we've kind of weathered the storm of the last eighteen months, and and now we're just ready to rock, which is really exciting. One of the things that you and I have talked about um, over the last couple of years, as I did research for my book Rethink Innovation, is that it's things hiccups like this that when a company culture is really prepared to look for opportunities and to be able to solve problems differently. And also one thing that you guys have been really great at with Park Mobile is making sure that that kind of thinking of looking for opportunities and solving problems 
is something that's really everybody's business and you really ingrained that into your DNA. Now, is this, you've talked about how you started these innovation weeks and am I right? You've had five of them gearing up for your sixth one. Correct. Correct. So yeah. twice you a tell year. Us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, twice a year, we basically, we give our team a, a full week to go work on whatever they want to work on. So we kind of say, okay, we're going to, we're going to pause the day to day of the business and we're going to encourage everyone to break into teams and go explore some new ideas and, and maybe work with a new technology that someone's excited about or uh, go and, and, and look at a problem that we know exists uh, either at, you know, in the industry or even within our company and go and just for a week, just go try to figure out how to solve that problem. And uh, that's become a very, very popular exercise at the company. Um, so during COVID, we had to shift away from the in-person innovation weeks. Now we do virtual uh, innovation weeks, but the output has still been great. And so we, um, we have this kind of gr big ceremony at the end where the teams come in, they present what they've been working on, some new ideas, some new technologies, some, uh, some will do full demos of new things they've, be they've built during innovation week. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And it's great to see people from uh, different parts of the company coming together to solve big problems. Uh, and I think I, I've told you this story before. We had uh, a woman on our finance team. She basically uh, built a tool. She taught herself a, a programming language and built a tool that would make the financial reconciliation process a lot easier and, and take what used to be a seven day process and take it and basically make it happen in about seven minutes. Um, which was just, you know, mind blowing when she showed us the demo. So this is just a great exercise. It's, it's something everyone in the company really looks forward to. And, you know, I'm happy to say we've just gotten some big ideas out of it and things that have um, products that we brought to market or, or innovations that have really, really helped the internal efficiency of the company uh, in a big way. So it's something that uh, has become kind of the signature event or uh signature event, you know, twice a year at Park Mobile. It's a lot of fun. And that's kind of something that you talk about, that balance between like the big ideas that really make a difference that you have to put on the product roadmap or put into a longer term strategy part of your business, but also those like little incremental things that eat away, I think, at people's soul when they have to sit and do this mind numbing, you know, monotonous work week after week after week what like with all of this stuff and that that balance between the two what's the biggest change that you've seen maybe in the employees or the culture while you've been doing these yeah i i think you know it, it, it's interesting i i think in, in a lot of companies i've worked in in the past uh, people had ideas and just didn't know what to do with them and, and that's always really frustrating because you have someone who's maybe you know, maybe they're at a junior level, but they see a real opportunity and they want to do something and there's just no forum for them to do it. And there's no there's no time for them to do it. So by by creating an innovation week and giving people that space when they can go create, when they can be innovative, when they can go solve problems, I really think that um, creates kind of a mindset in the culture that, oh, the company really wants us to think. And the company really wants us to be proactive about, you know, solving challenges that we see within the business. And now I'll actually say um, we, we do have times when in an off cycle, someone will have an idea. What? I know it's not innovation week, but I really want to show you this thing. Um, and, and that's that's great. That's the idea is that um, innovation is everybody's job. Uh, there's there's no team that owns innovation, right? It, innovation uh, should permeate throughout the company. And if you create a culture that, uh, you know, makes time for it, recognizes it, appreciates it, um, you'll start to see ideas really come from everywhere. And, and so that's, I think, where we are. And that's why I think employees really, you know, really like working here because they know that in addition to the, you know, the fun of the just the day to day, the regular day to day, they're going to be able to you know, take some time every year and try to, you know, experiment with maybe a new technology that they've really wanted to learn or just kind of go fix something they know is broken, but they don't have time to fix in their day to day. And, and that's very rewarding for our employees. Now, I think what you just described is is almost the the cure for something I heard 
one of my colleagues talk about the other day that there's another pandemic that we're in and it's it's the pandemic of thinking where we are we've learned helplessness that we're waiting for somebody else to have the idea and just tell us what to do and execute it versus it really looking for everybody inside a company to come up with those ideas and you've you've given people the space you've get like physical space mental space the time to do it do you see a big shift in the culture that people are thinking differently that people are thinking more for themselves and more about the work that they do than maybe they did a few years ago uh I, th I think that's absolutely true. I, I think people that come to a company like Park Mobile, and we're a smallish company, we're about 200 employees. Um, generally at a company that size, you, you're getting people who are maybe a little bit more entrepreneurial. Um, they don't wanna work in the big company generally. And so, you know, we have a lot of people who um, come to us because it's smaller and they know they can make an impact, right? Um, but then the challenge is how do you make that impact once you're here? Because the other, uh, the other thing that happens in small companies is that, you know, you just, you tend not to have enough resources to just do the jobs that everyone has to do every day. And that's why we thought this innovation week is really important because it gives you that space. So you can always plan for it. you say, well, I have this idea. Uh, you know, we have employees who kind of keep their log of ideas for innovation week and just wait kind of until the innovation week. And they, we have other employees that sometimes, will go kind of off cycle and, and try to get their ideas in, you know, outside of an innovation week. But all that does is it just spurs on, you know, the, uh, the idea flow within the company. And so, and that's the best thing. And so as we're, um, as we're continuing to grow and we're seeing our business come back, uh, we're looking constantly at, okay, what are some other challenges or problems that we can solve for people who are parking? And I, I know you, you have mentioned uh, you have a hard time, finding your car after you've parked. So you don't remember where you parked. Um, so you should know that we've released a, a solution that actually it's called the find my car feature that, that will direct you back to your car. <laughs> That's exactly what I need. I feel like I'm in a Seinfeld episode because right. I'm certain it's been stolen because I can't find it. <laughs> right. Right. So when you use the park mobile app, that's not a problem. And it's because of these, we're, we're constantly pushing on innovation. We want to make sure that uh, you know, we're, we fully understand, you know, the, the, what people are doing before they park, during the parking process, after they process and try to, you know, use our innovative ideas to make that process as, as good as it can be. It was funny. We were up at uh, Colorado State University in Fort Collins yesterday because our oldest is a sophomore up there. And we walked by and there's a big green kiosk, the color of the door behind you. And on the side, it says Park Mobile. And my kids went, hey, mom, it's Park Mobile. So they've, <laughs> they've heard enough about Park Mobile that they know that's just how you're supposed to park if you want to find your car. I know. Well, one of the um, unexpected innovations in this business through the years has been um, the green sign. Uh, <laughs> what, do, have you changed color? Uh, we we don't change color. Every now and then we will, um, you know, will accommodate a client that has a different color that they requested. We like we just rolled out at uh, Vanderbilt University, uh -huh. and they really wanted to have their Vanderbilt colors on the sign, so we were able to accommodate them. But usually, we recommend the green signs because the green signs are very bright, very high impact, so everyone sees them. And when I tell people that I work for Park Mobile, usually the first thing they say is, oh, the green signs. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's it's really one of the, the great things about this business is that, you know, we have uh, probably I think about 10 million of those green signs around the country. Oh, wow. So the, think of those as just, you know, little mini billboards wherever you go and you see Park Mobile. And, and that really uh, is an efficient marketing tool for us. Uh, I mean, signage is usually the number one way that people find out about Park Mobile. And because we have these signs everywhere, uh, you know, we don't have to spend as much on, you know, television advertising and doing all these big brand campaigns because the signs really do the heavy list lifting for us. Now, how many markets are you in now? Because you said you did a lot of client acquisition this last year. Yeah, we're in over 500 cities. Mm -hmm. And one of, um, something that I find really interesting is that you aren't just really confined to parking is that you, when you talk about what do people do before, during, and after, you're really looking at that before part way before and starting to do some really interesting and innovative things in how you partner with municipalities. Can you talk about that? Or did I just let like a secret thing out of the bag? No, no. <laughs> I, I mean, so 
one of the the challenges that that cities have um, around parking is that people don't know where they're going, right? They they just drive into a city center and start circling the block looking for parking, and and what's the impact of that congestion? And and you know, cities even even now with COVID, I mean, cities are still very congested, and so we constantly think about okay, what can what can we do? to help solve that problem with our city clients. And so we introduced a feature that's called parking availability. So it shows you in a city area, what are the streets that have available parking and what streets don't. So as you're trip planning before you even drive into the city, uh, you can actually go into the Park Mobile app and look around and say, oh, well, I have a meeting on 10th and Spring and there's no parking around there, but two blocks away, it looks like that street has plenty of parking. And so then you drive directly to that street and you find the spot and then you walk two blocks rather than circling the block for 20 minutes trying to find a spot. So that's that's a way that cities are looking at, um, you know, just raising awareness for people driving in on the best possible places to park in the city. Um, the other way that we help people is that we offer uh, prepaid reservations. So maybe you don't want to just look for parking. You just want to know, hey, I'm driving into Midtown. I want to I want to just find a garage and just have a spot there waiting for me guaranteed. Um, we offer that service in the app as well. So you can, when you're in the Park Mobile app, you can click uh, reserve and it'll show you all the garages around the area that you're going to. Uh, you pick the garage and then you drive right there and you have uh, you have that guaranteed spot. So again, really smart ways of of trying to get people where they're going parked out of their vehicle and on with their day and reduce that frustration you sometimes have if you're circling the block, if you're uh, just trying to find parking after you drive to the location. Now, when you, when you think about all of this and how you've really been able to instill Park Mobile um, earlier in a decision-making process, and that it's not just about paying, finding and paying for parking, but all of the traffic planning and things like that you just talked about, what, what's the biggest opportunity for innovation that CEOs don't realize that you've seen happen because of how you've made it an ingrained part of your culture the last couple of years? I, I think, I mean, still the some of the biggest innovation opportunities um, are gonna come from your consumers, right? Or your customer, uh, depending if you're B2B or B2C. Uh, so one of the things that that we did a lot during COVID is we did a lot of research with our users and we really try to hone in on what are some things uh, that they don't like about the app or they're looking for in the app that we weren't delivering today. And, and consumers will be uh, you know, brutally honest with you most of the time when you ask them, especially in, in the- Right to the world. heart. <laughs> um, you know, the parking world is one that's, that's just kind of fraught with a lot of frustration. So uh, oftentimes they will, uh, you know, a, a, a focus group becomes a support group for people who are frustrated parkers. Um, but one of the things that we, we learned from consumers that drove a lot of innovation that we released last year was that they were very frustrated uh, with having just kind of a very binary choice uh, when they're parking in the way they could pay. So right now you can pay at a meter or you can pay on the app, okay? And, and that seems like good choices, right? You could, you know, you have the hardware the, or, or the, the phone, um, but people would say to us, well, Jeff, I don't drive into the city that often. I don't want to have to download yet another app to have on my phone uh, that I have to set up an account and add a credit card payment method. Um, that just seems like a lot of work just to pay for parking. I'm just going to use the meter. And, and that was really good feedback. And it, it really made us see like that we weren't necessarily, we were forcing uh, consumers to basically pay the way we wanted them to pay Yeah, through the app as opposed to meeting them where they are. And we kind of have this mantra of like, we need to meet consumers where they are. So if they don't want to pay in an app, we have to give them more options. So in addition to the, the, the iOS and Android app, we, down, we added a, a web app. So just in a mobile browser right now, you can use Park Mobile to pay for parking. And it has a guest checkout option. So you don't even need to create an account. Very quick and easy to pay for parking. We also added payment in the Google Pay app. So if you don't even wanna have the Park Mobile app on your phone, yet you have the Google Pay app, you can use Park Mobile right inside of Google Pay. So we work with Google on an integration there. And so we call these the ways to pay. So we've, we've really expanded 
the ways to pay for users. Uh, so now it's app, web, um, Google Pay, even there's a text to park option. And it was all based on uh, spending a lot of time listening to our consumers, really figuring out what were their frustrations and then really innovating to, to figure out how do we how do we solve those problems that consumers have with our product? You know, and I, I think it's that gap that really provides companies with an opportunity for innovation, depending on their mindset and how they look at it, because there was some research that came out from Gartner and this was B2B specific, but it said there's something like a 43% gap between how brands are forcing buyers to buy and how customers actually want to buy. So brands are saying, you know, especially heads of sales are saying, well, the customer doesn't understand. They really need to talk to us. They need to buy this way. They need to do all these things. Well, they're not listening to the customers who are saying, if I had any other option under the sun, I would take that option in such a heartbeat. Why do you yeah. think people get so stuck in that mode and and won't listen to the people who actually decide if something survives or or fails? I, I think because the prospect of going and accommodating your customer or your user is very scary sometimes. Because uh -huh. you know, if your customer wants this thing or wants to do something this way, especially if you're in sales, oh, now I have to go talk to my technology team. <laughs> I have to get us on the roadmap and this is going to be really challenging. Um, and, and sometimes the path of least resistance is just to do it the way we've all, always done it. Right. Uh -huh. But, you know, if you if you don't keep up with the customer or the consumer, uh, you're eventually going to lose them because somebody else will provide, you know, will meet their needs uh, and, and you may have missed the mark. And so I, I, I think. Um, uh, we really think about this this concept of, of meeting consumers where they are um, as opposed to expecting them to come to us. And so whenever we're thinking about the product, um, we always think about like, all right, how are we evolving the product to continually meet consumers where they are? Because, uh, I mean, one of the interesting things in, in parking in most industries, um, and if you think about, you know, the, the old Maslow's hierarchy of needs yeah. uh, architecture, you know, uh, for a long time, it was there was a coin meter, right? <laughs> People were like, oh, I don't, I don't like coins. They're like, okay, we're going to add a credit card to the meter now. Now you can pay with coins or a credit card. And they're like, well, I want to pay on my phone. Then we added phone, and now they're like, well, I don't, I don't want to pay on my phone. I want to pay, you know, in the way I want to pay. <laughs> yeah. I download an app. I want to pay, and, and so I think, but it's 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 a it's a real it's really important to understand that that, that consumer behavior is always evolving. And consumers are always going to kind of keep raising the bar on, on their expectations. And so, you know, innovators have to keep up with consumers and sometimes, you know, even, you know, get ahead of consumers on these things. Um, so you're you're not getting left behind and you're not getting leapfrogged by the competition. Um, some things we're working on now are, are related to EV charging, right? So um, you could use the Park Mobile app to find spaces that have EV charging stations. All right, it's about 2% of cars in the United States today have are, are electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, but we know that's going to increase over time. And so we want to make sure, you know, we are we're building a product that in five years will continue to be very relevant to consumers and drivers and, and doesn't get left behind. You know, it's interesting. A couple of weeks ago, we had um, BlackBerry CMO Mark Wilson on Connect the Dots. And he was talking about the software that goes into the cars. And pretty soon you're just going to pay with your car itself. You know, so it's it is fascinating to see that wherever you go, consumers or your customers are always, you know, a couple of steps ahead with what they want. Yeah, I would disagree with Mark on paying right from the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see, right? I guess well, we'll see. Well, I, I will tell you. So we are um, we we have a, a native integration into BMWs. Mm -hmm. We've had it for since I think 2018, and nobody uses it. Ah, uh, it's it, I mean, some people do, but it's very very small because if you think about it you know, the experience in the center display unit right now, it's very limited in what you can do and you have to use kind of a turn dial. Mm -hmm. um, so until the center display units really get modernized, mm -hmm. it'd be very hard for applications to work the way they work on the phone. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Now you have CarPlay, you have Android Auto. It seems like the, the, the auto industry is standardizing there. And we're looking at those platforms as possible ways where we can do the in-car payments. Uh -huh. um, and so we'll, we'll see how it evolves. But I, I think I think for now, um, it's still kind of a very, the game is really still in the app. 
And you know, and a lot of people carry their phone with them all the every place anyway. So maybe that takes care of it for now. Yeah. And what, one of these, this idea of meeting the customer where they are. I don't know that I hear a lot of CEOs talk about that, but in your transition of coming to the CEO chair from a CMO, which is which is pretty rare. Not many CEOs come from the, the marketing department. Do you think it gives you a different, unique perspective on the work that you do as a CEO because you came up through the ranks of marketing? I, I think it probably does because I'm probably more focused on... Um, on the overall brand than, than CEOs who maybe came up through a traditional finance or operations role. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think for me, it all just comes down to, you know, three core things. It's, it's we have to continue to have the best product. Uh, to have the best product, we have to be able to recruit and retain the best people. And to get the best people, we have to have the best culture. And so, you know, I think what what my focus is, you know, as a CEO are really on on those three things, but especially on on the people side, because if we don't have the right teams in place, the right people in place, uh, we're not going to win. And, and so that's really um, something I'm spending a lot more time on probably than I did in, in the marketing seat. Now, the good news is, you know, in most organizations, marketing is, is really instrumental to culture. And so I've, I've been focusing a lot on that during my time at Park Mobile. Uh, but it, it's, you know, I, I think really, um, really I'm focused on on the people side of it. I want to make sure we have the best people, the right people, and that we're very focused on delivering uh, the best product to the market. That's great. And I know that you've talked about how the different innovation styles of people at Park Mobile, you know, some of it depending on the role, some of it just depending on the personality and some of it just depending on how they naturally come up with ideas. And I think that's kind of a fascinating ecosystem when you look at the people aspect of a company. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is because I don't know that anybody would really say that Park Mobile's marketing sucks. <laughs> so maybe you, uh, you really know what you're talking about here in your book that's coming out here, How Not to Suck at Marketing. So I know that you started out in the ad world. You worked for Saatchi and Saatchi and had clients like P and G and went to the brand side and then worked for a number of companies before you landed at, at park mobile. Where did this idea that marketing actually sucks and why we shouldn't suck so much at it? How did this come about? So I, I was speaking at a, at a marketing conference one year and uh, the title of my presentation was how not to suck at marketing. And it was one of these conferences that has like multiple sessions going on at the same time. So I was probably one of three options that people could have attended. And I walked into the room about 15 minutes before the presentation to get set up. And it, the room was already overflowing with people to come attend a session called How Not to Suck at Marketing. And so I thought I might be onto something here um, that, that uh, I think for a lot of marketers today, um, we feel like we're not doing a great job or we're not doing as good as we want to do or, or could do. And when you look at all the industry stats, generally the, the marketing leader has the shortest tenure in the C-suite. Um, so something is going on within marketing that's making it very hard for the people that are the practitioners to be successful in some ways. Um, and I, you know, I talked to a lot of my peers and, um, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, people just feel like, you know, they suck. Um, and, and I've been there. I, I, you know, I, I tell the story in the book that I joined a company uh, called PGI uh, that had, had essentially blown up the marketing department about, about a year before I joined. And they hadn't, they, I was on kind of the, the team they had brought in to kind of rebuild what was uh, this, this demolished marketing function. And so you can imagine a, a company that had blown up their marketing department and hadn't had any marketers in there for a year, just about everything was broken, right? Like there was, the brand was terrible. There was no, the website was terrible. They had no presence on the search engines. And I got in there, I was like, wow, I am just gonna crush this job because there's so much opportunity here. And then six months in, I had accomplished very little. <laughs> and I just was like, wow, this is my mess now, I own it. And I just felt like I just sucked at my job. And, and, and the book is a lot about the things you can do to, to not necessarily, you know, change the world to, to, you know, to totally 
crush it, but to just not suck, to just get incrementally better over time and to put those runs on the board and those kind of runs start to add up. And, and so that's the idea is like, here are the things you should focus on. Here are the things you need to do as a marketer. Um, acknowledging that, you know, the, the job of a marketer today is, is very complicated. Um, you know, you look at the, the MarTech landscape uh, chart that comes out every year from Scott Brinker. And it's like, there's like 8,000 different marketing technology tools on it today. Uh, how do you choose which is the right one for you? And so it, it's acknowledging that our job is really challenging. Um, it's, it's very dynamic and changing. And the book just talks about some, some you know, best practices and tips and um, a lot of stuff that, you know, I've learned by just just messing up. Because <laughs> uh, that's allowed. <laughs> You know, and you talk about um, you talk about something in here that you just saw you casually mentioned a minute ago, and that's focus. And I think marketers of all the departments in a company right now have the hardest time focusing because you mentioned Scott Brinker. And I think he said this year in, in 2021, there's as many MarTech platforms just in Europe as there were altogether in 2016. So it's, it is crazy and the number of things that we have to master and the number of things that as a CMO, you're expected to be an expert at or have the answers to, you know, it, it is brand, it is demand gen, it is content, it is all of these things. What's the one thing that you think would help marketers really understand how to decide what their focus area should be because I'm assuming it's different for every marketer and in every company. Would that be right? Yeah, it really is. Um, so, you know, you talk about this idea of focus. Focus is critical. Um, the other the other kind of thing marketers have to do is be very flexible. And also in just recognizing what I did that worked at my last company uh, may not work here. Or what I learned in business school, that may not apply. That framework may not apply in my current job. Um, so it, it focus and flexibility are key, but I always do an exercise, um, when I join a company or when I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm thinking about my annual plan and it's kind of like a, a fill in the blank exercise and depending on the company or what your challenges are, the, the, the sentence may look different, but I say, you know, we are not growing revenue faster because of blank or we are losing deals because of blank. Right. And, and it's so it's a, a fill in the blank question. And once you do that, it really uh, crystallizes your thinking around what your problem is. So it might be uh, we are not growing revenue faster because uh, we have deficiencies in our product and we're not we're, we're we're not winning as many deals or we are losing deals because of this product gap or we're not growing revenue because we're uh, we don't have enough leads coming in. Right. And so once you kind of identify uh, the whatever the term in the blank is, uh, that should be where you spend almost 100% of your mind share on your marketing program, right? Um, because if you're if you're trying as a marketer to you know to to rebuild the website and rebrand and uh, rip out the marketing automation tool and launch you know five new campaigns and optimize for search engines, you're you're probably going to fail at a lot of those things. Whereas if, if your biggest problem is that um, you're not uh, you don't have enough leads coming in and you're not getting even a, you're, you're not getting your salespeople enough at bats, you're not getting into the deals, that should be 100 percent of your focus. Right. And then everything else, like maybe the rebranding. Yes, you have to do it, but that could wait. So, so that's the idea is that, you know, you write that statement, fill in the blanks and then focus 100 percent of your energy on trying to fix that statement. And that I've, I've done that at my last couple of companies and it works really well and it, it eliminates a lot of the noise. And so if someone comes to you and says, hey, Jeff, I want to I want to implement um, a Marketo. I was like, well, how is Marketo going to solve this problem that we've, we've identified? Right. And that that really kind of um, changes the thinking. And so that that's been a strategy that's been very successful in cutting through the noise and, and getting to kind of focus on, you know, let's do fewer things and do them very well. And I think even all the teams keep them really focused on, on what's most important. 
Well, I, I, I'm happy to have gotten an advanced copy. I love it. It's not just a fun book. It's an easy to read. And I love all of the stories that you share in it from your own personal experience. I think that's great. Where can people find your new book? Where can they follow your work? Where can they watch all of the great things that Park Mobile's doing with marketing, with innovation and, and everything else that they're doing, Jeff? So uh, people could go to hownottosuckatmarketing.com. So that's the, the website where you can pre-order the book, you can get on the mailing list, uh, you can contact me through the website if you want to. I also created um, a resource guide there, so some of the best marketing resources, and a list of common marketing acronyms, uh, which is very important, especially for um, if, if you ever struggle to kind of understand all the weird acronyms in marketing, I created kind of the master list there. So go check out how not to mark, suck at marketing.com. You could also hit me up on LinkedIn. Uh, it, you know, just look at Jeff Perkins, CEO of Park Mobile. So um, I'm happy to to chat with anyone who reaches out after uh, after the webcast. Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us today, Jeff. It's going to be fun to watch what you do as CEO because it's been wonderful to learn from you and watch what you did as CMO. So thanks for joining us today on Connect the Dots. All right. Thanks, Carla. For everyone else, I would love if you would follow me, connect with me directly on LinkedIn, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the little bell so that you can be notified every time we have a new live stream or release a new video. I'm Carla Johnson. That's everything for this episode of Connect the Dots. And I look forward to seeing you next week.